Hi, let's start with the concept capsules for today. The topic that we're going to look at is demystifying forward rate agreements or as we popularly call them, the FRA contracts. Now, these are variants of your traditional forward contracts only. So the contracts that you're already familiar with, so, uh, such as let's say, you know, a commodity forward contract or a stock forward or a bond forward contract. The variants of that with the difference that your underlying is not a physical asset or a financial asset, but an interest rate. Now, usually people do not struggle with the traditional forward contracts, but when it comes to the FRA agreements or the forward rate agreements, there is a slight confusion because it has a unique notation, which you don't really find in the other places. It has a formula that is slightly different than your forward pricing formula or your forward, uh, you know, uh, valuation formula. And the party that is going long or short becomes slightly confusing to remember whether it is, whether it is the borrower or the lender. So we are going to look at ways of trying to remember all of this in an easier manner. Uh, we'll also try to make sure that we don't have to remember the formula or memorize the formula because we will be relying on the timeline to get to the formula. So if you understand the timeline well, you can completely ignore the formula that has been given in the text and you can simply rely on the timeline to get to the final answer. So how to do that? We're just going to see that. Now let's do a quick recap of what a forward rate agreement is. Now, just like your traditional forward contract, FRA is also an OTC derivative. It's over the counter. That means that this is not something that you're going to find on an exchange. It is a private contract and it is a customized contract between the two parties. So obviously it does come with its share of credit risk as well. Now, what is the purpose of a FRA? Now, a forward contract is used to lock in a future transaction value. So you have a party that goes long and you have the other party that goes short and they agree on the transaction value way in advance. So that's what the purpose of a forward contract is to lock in the future transaction value. Now for a FRA, that transaction value is not the price of any physical commodity, such as let's say gold or a financial asset, such as a stock or a bond, but an interest rate. So the two parties, the borrower and the lender are entering into a contract where they fixed the interest rate of a loan that has to be given in advance. Now, what is the purpose of that? The borrower wants to borrow money in the future and he's afraid that the interest rates might go up. Similarly, the lender wants to lend money, not today, but in the future. And he's afraid that the interest rates might go down. So just like a traditional forward, these two parties would come together and they would decide the borrowing slash the lending rate in advance. And that is what is called as the FRA rate. So that is going to be a fixed rate. So it typically involves two parties exchanging a fixed interest rate for a floating one. Now, how does the floating rate come into the picture? We'll come to that later. Now, FRA involves two counterparties. Now we have to pay attention here because this terminology ends up be, being quite confusing for candidates. Now, remember any forward contract will have a long and a short. Long is the party that wants to buy the underlying. Short is the party that wants to sell the underlying. But in this case, there is nothing to buy or sell because there is no physical asset or a financial asset that is being bought or sold. So how do we really interpret that? Now, long, the, the long party is essentially the borrower. Now, how do we remember this for the exam so that we don't get confused? Now, vaguely think of it as buying the money. Of course, you can't buy money in real life, but here, just so that we don't forget about it, think of it as buying the money. Now, how are you buying the money? You're essentially taking the loan, which means you are the borrower. Now, the borrower is going to pay a fixed rate and he's going to receive the floating rate. Remember, the positions are always the opposite. If you are paying fixed, you're going to receive floating and vice versa. You can't be there on both the sides. It's always the opposite position. Now, if you're long and you're paying the fixed, that means the other party is the one which has to receive that fixed. So short the loan is like selling the money. So you're the lender. You want to lend out money. You're afraid that the rates could go down and that's why you've entered into the contract. So that is the lender. So the lender is going to receive the fixed, which has been given by the other party, which is long. 
and it is going to pay floating. So remember, long is the party which is paying fixed and receiving floating and short is the party that is paying floating and receiving fixed. The main rate which matters here, remember, is the FRA rate, which is the fixed rate. So we need to focus much more on the fixed side. The floating comes in because we need to calculate the payoff to the position, the profit and loss to the position. So that's where we're going to use the floating side. So think of going long as buying the money and going short as selling the money. Now the buyer and the seller obviously are entering into that contract with opposite expectations, just like any other trade. The buyer, which, which is the long, is expecting that the rates might go up and that's why he's entering into the contract. The person who's going short, the lender, is expecting that the rates will go down and that is his purpose of entering into the contract. Now the first thing that confuses a lot of people is the naming convention. Now this is quite unique to FRA. We don't use this for regular forward contracts. Now the FRAs are denoted in the form of X into Y. The way we read this is X by Y and X and Y are essentially months. So a one by four FRA, what would that really mean? A one by four FRA essentially means that we are looking at entering into a forward rate agreement for one month. So we have, remember, we have not given or taken any money right now. We've just signed the agreement as of now. The theoretical loan, which is supposed to happen between both the lender and the borrower is going to start at time period one, and it is going to continue till time period four. So the actual period of borrowing or lending for that theoretical loan is not four months. That is actually four minus one, which is three months. Now for FRA, we take one month as 30 days. So whatever number of months you see, you multiply that with 30 to get to the number of days. Okay. Now you do get questions on the naming convention as well. And I'll tell you the kind of confusion which really occurs. So if you're asked one by four, some people might get confused that are we talking about a one month loan starting four months from now? Or are we talking about a four months loan starting one month from now? Uh, so these are the kind of confusions that happen. I'll tell you a simple way or a simple trick to remember the naming convention. And if you follow that, you won't ever get confused. Now, what do we do? We have a one by four FRA. So the first thing that we do is we simply write one and four. Okay. So do it like this. So simply write one and four side by side, like you would do normally. Okay. Now, whenever you're asked that, what does this really denote? Simply put a zero in front. So put a zero here. So you had one and four that we typed out and then we had zero here. Now, the only thing that you need to do is this is just a timeline. So just put a timeline around it. So it becomes like this. So you have zero, one and four, and you've just made this or converted this into a timeline. Now, what does this really mean from zero to one? Zero is when you are entering into the FRA agreement. So that is the FRA initiation date. One is when the FRA is terminating. That's the FRA maturity date. The date when the FRA matures, that is essentially the time when that theoretical loan is being made. So this will also be the time period when the borrowing or the lending is supposed to theoretically start. And four is the time period when it's supposed to end. So if we have zero, one and four, we know this is a timeline. So zero to one, so one month from now is when the borrowing or lending is going to start. And till when is it going to continue? It's going to continue till four. That means how long is that theoretical loan really for? That is not for four months. That is not for one month. That is for the time period between one and four. And that is four minus one, which is equal to three. So that's all that you need to do. So whenever you're getting confused about the naming convention, simply put both the numbers like this, put a zero in front of that and convert it into a timeline. So you'd never get confused that are we talking about a four month loan, one month loan, or well, you know, any, any of that uh, issues. You can simply do four minus one equal to three now. Okay. Now, all of this has been given in months. Remember, we just said that we have to convert that to a number of days. So one, when we talk about one month here, we take it as 30 days. Similarly, when we talk about the time period between one to four, that is three months. So we take that 
as 90 days, 30 into 3. Okay. So this is how we denote a frost. So this notation is quite unique to frost. We need to know this because this does get tested in the exam. Now let's try out a question on this to make sure that we understand how to do this. Now we have a 3 by 9 fra and the question is, what does it refer to? Does it refer to a 90 day LIBOR loan starting 270 days from now? Does it refer to a 270 day LIBOR loan starting 90 days from now? Or a 180 day LIBOR loan starting 90 days from now? Now what did we say about this? If it's a 3 by 9 fra that we are talking about, simply write down the numbers first. So you have 3 and you have 9, put a 0 in front of that and simply convert it into a timeline. So you have 0, 3 and 9. So that means that the FRA is starting at time period 0, it's ending at 3 and the loan is between 3 to 9. So all that you need to do now is to convert it into the number of days. So just to repeat that, you have 9, 3, put a 0, make a timeline around it. Now this is going to give us the correct answer. Now the FRA termination date is 0 to 3, that means it's 3 months, 3 months is 90 days. So 90 days is this particular time period. How much is the loan duration that is between 3 to 9? That is 6 months. So 6 in, uh, that's 6 months. So in terms of the number of days, that means we're talking about 6 into 30. That is 180 days. So the correct answer is, it is a 180 day loan starting 90 days from now. So the answer is C. So 180 day LIBOR loan starting 90 days from now. So that is essentially your FRA naming convention. So I hope this will make it easier for you to remember the convention now. Now let's compare a FRA to a traditional forward contract. Now a traditional forward contract is a lot more easier to value because it's just one simple formula and uh, you don't, you're basically your derivative expiry date and your underlying expiry date is essentially on the same day, right? So you don't really have to think about two time periods. But the problem with the FRA is that there are two dates to actually take care of. And that's where the confusion arises. So let's have a look at this particular example to understand it. Now the example that we have is a 2 by 3 FRA. Now 2 by 3 FRA, again, remember the naming convention, 2 by 3 FRA would mean that we simply write 2 and 3 here, put a 0 in front of it, and that's going to be our timeline. So it is essentially a one month loan starting two months from now. Okay. And of course you can convert that into the number of days. So this is the timeline that we have zero, two, and three, two months is obviously 60 days and three months is 90 days. So your loan period is 90 minus 60, which is 30 days or basically just a month. So three minus two is what you would have got. Now, why do we have two different dates? Now, keep in mind that when we're talking about a loan or an underlying as an interest rate, we're essentially saying we want to lock in the rate for a loan which has been made in the future. So what we're trying to do is we want to borrow or lend money, not right now, but 60 days from today. So that's why we enter into the forward contract today. Your forward contract expires here. Now that is something that you need to pay attention to. Your contract is not expiring here. It's expiring here. Your theoretical loan is going to start from this time period and it's going to continue till three. So it's going to start at two and it's going to continue till three. Why are we calling it a theoretical loan? The reason why we're saying that is because there is no real loan that is being made. It is just uh, you know, something of uh, which we are doing uh, settlement with cash. So it's a cash settled contract. So you're not actually giving a loan to anyone. You're not actually taking a loan from anyone. And that's why since we are only talking about a theoretical loan, we need to have a principle that is called as a notional. Notional means it's not a real principle. It's just something that we are using for the purpose of calculation. Okay. All right. Now, in a regular forward contract, how would you decide what the profit and loss is? If you are the person who is long, if you're the party who is long, that means you want to buy the underlying. If the price of that underlying went up in the future, then that is when you would have made money from the contract. So for instance, let's say you were supposed to purchase something at $30 
that is the forward rate uh, that you had signed up for and the rate in the market, the spot rate in the market in the future went to $40. This is, so that will be your ST. That is when you would have made money as the long. Why? Because without the contract, you would have had paid, you would have to pay $40, but now you end up paying $30. So how much did you make from this? That was the difference, $10. How did we come to this? You simply did ST minus F. Now, even for a FRA, a forward rate agreement, it works in a similar manner. But the thing to realize here is that whenever you pay the interest on a loan, that interest is not paid upfront. The interest on a loan is paid at the end. So that means that the theoretical loan starts at this point at two months, but it ends at three months. So the ST minus F that you would have is not going to occur here at two months like it would have had in a regular forward contract. In a FRA, that ST minus F is actually going to occur here. Now, if I want to cash settle this contract at two months, I cannot settle it using ST minus F. What will I need to do? I will actually need to discount this value back to two months. That is where there is a slight complication with FRA and the additional step that we need to keep in mind. So the payoff for the long forward contract is still ST minus F, but that ST minus F is supposed to occur here. That is why we take it back to the FRA expiration date so that we can settle it in cash. So we have to account for uh, the discounting rate here as well. Now let's try out a question to understand this better. Now we've been given a one by four FRA with a notional principle of $1 million. Now suppose that at contract expiration, the 90 day LIBOR at settlement is 6% and the contract rate is 5.5%. We need to calculate the value of the FRA at maturity. Now let's do this from the perspective of the party which has gone long on this contract. That means that party is the borrower. Now without actually using any formula right now, let's first understand this question logically. Now the 90 day LIBOR at settlement is 6%. So that is uh, what is referring to essentially your ST that is the spot rate at maturity. The contract rate is 5.5%. That means that we are talking about F that is the FRA rate. Now from the perspective of the borrower without even looking at any of the other things, what we can easily say is that without the contract, this party would have ended up paying 6%. But because they have a FRA agreement in place, they end up paying 5.5% which means that they're saving 0.5%. So in this case, the long is actually making money. So that is the one which is gaining from the contract. So obviously the short is the one which is losing on the contract. So how did we find this? We simply did ST minus F, that is six minus 5.5, which is 0.5%. Now the thing to remember that we just saw in the previous slide is that this 0.5% is not going to occur when the FRA expires, it's going to occur at the end of the theoretical loan period. So that is something that we will need to discount back to the FRA expiration. The other thing is that the 6% and 5.5% are by default the annualized rates. Now here, the time period of the loan is not one year. So we cannot use these rates as it is. We need to deannualize them as well. So now let's look at the formula. Now the payment to the loan is notional principal times your rate at settlement minus the FRA rate, which has been deannualized, divided by one plus rate uh, at settlement into days by 360. Now let's see if we need to actually remember this formula in the first place. Now payment to the long, for the long forward contract, we know that the payoff is ST minus F. Now if you look at this, rate, rate at settlement minus the FRA rate, rate at set settlement is nothing but ST. FRA rate is nothing but F. So this part of your numerator is actually exactly just your regular forward pricing formula, nothing different. Now, the next thing is that it has been multiplied by days by 360. Why? Because these are annualized rates, which have to be deannualized. We have to deannualize it for that time period for which the loan is actually being given or taken. So we can't do it for one year. We have to look at the exact number of days there. Now, once you do this part, you will still end up with a percentage figure only. 
Now we can't exchange percentages. We need to exchange a dollar amount. So we need to multiply it with the notional principle, which is $1 billion here. So that's why it has been multiplied by the notional principle. Now let's look at the timeline. This is the kind of timeline that you would have. So you have a one by four fra. Recall one by four means that we will simply put one and four. We put zero in front of that and that's your timeline. So that's what we see here. So your fra expires in one month. That is when your loan is going to start. It remains there for three more months. So your borrowing or lending period is three months. So that's why your T is four months here. Now your fra is going to mature here. That means the ST minus F that you would have is going to be valid at T is equal to four. So 6% minus 5.5% is what you would have here. So you have six minus 5.5% here. Now that needs to be adjusted for only the loan period. Now what is your loan period? Loan period is three months. So three months, remember we are taking every single month as 30 days. So that means we have to adjust this rate for 90 days. So we take 90 by 360, we multiply with 90 by 360. Then we multiply it with the notional principle to convert it to a dollar amount that is $1 million. So that is what we multiply on the left. Now, after doing all of this calculation, when, when we multiply it with 1 million here and we deanalyze it by multiplying it with 90 by 360, all of this calculation is only going to give you the payoff at T is equal to 4. We are missing the most important step right now. And that step is that we need to settle the contract at 1, not at 4. That means whatever figure we have calculated at t equal to 4, that needs to be brought back to one month. Now, the part that you need to remember very well here is that the discounting rate that you're going to use at this point is not going to be your contract rate. Now, why is that the case? Contract rate was the rate that you had, uh, you know, locked in at t equal to 0. So that's not going to be available to you at t equal to 1. The discounting rate that you will have to use will be the market rate which is applicable between 1 and 4 and that is essentially the 90 day LIBOR which is 6%. So keep this in mind for discounting this never take the contract rate never take the FRA rate it is the rate at settlement that has to be used unless some other discounting rate has been explicitly provided to you in the question. So rate at settlement is the one that you will have to use the denominator. So you don't need to memorize this formula as such, simply go by your timeline. So at this point, 6 minus 5.5. Remember, we are talking about the long position right now. So 0.5% that has been adjusted for 90 days, multiplied with 1 million to convert it to a dollar amount. Then that is discounted for three months to get the value at t equal to 1. So now let's look at the solution. So 1 million into 6 minus 5.5 into 90 by 360. So your numerator ends up being $1,250. Now this was at t equal to 4. So we need to get it back to t equal to 1. So we discount it at the rate of 6%. Of course, that is something that we need to adjust again for 90 days. And we get a value of $1,231. So that is what the value of FRA is going to be. So I hope you found this video useful and you're able to remember the FRA notation as well as the FRA valuation formula. So uh, you, know, you can just derive the formula on the spot yourself. You don't even need to memorize it. The only thing is that you need to understand the timeline well. So if you understand the timeline, whether it's forwards, futures or FRA, everything becomes simpler for you. So we simply go by the timeline rather than memorizing the formula.